Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah. Sitting across from me is the always handsome Alex. Mm. How are you, Alex? I'm good. It's good. Yeah. I feel pretty good today. I'm excited. It's late at night right now, so I feel like the full moon is affecting my senses, so I have heightened you, you as if a wolf. Yeah, man, you howling at the wolf at the moon? Let's howl for a second. Oh. You start howling. I finished the dog, howl. You're making my dog go nuts. <laughs> That's true. They do this weird thing when yeah. you howl at them. They start howling. Yep. Like <laughs> it's, they, they, and then they go and then interesting. You, you stop and then they just and keep. They'll going. keep going. Yep. Because like watch them. they're just all a pack going into this sort of howling. And thing. it's not. And it's not that they all howl. Rosie howls, and she like keeps it. The right. other two just like bark. They. They just keep barking. They'll bark at each other. and then they'll howl. Yep. And then bark and then howl and then howl, howl, bark, bark, howl. <laughs> yep. Like they, they don't even Only know. Only one it. stays constant. They can't tell what they want yep. out of this. Yep. This whole scenario. Anyways. Anyways, before we forget, Alex, this is the Easy Cheer for Boss. This is where we discuss the previous week in gaming. We go over maybe a topic or two at the end. Check us out on our podcast services and YouTube every Friday. If you enjoy our content, please support us over on patreon.com slash easyachievers. If you're a freeloader, don't worry. We are too. Please, five stars everywhere. Uh, give us the thumbs up. Give us the, like we've been saying, the five androids. I guess so. Whatever it is Play. on Google Play. Whatever is good. I think it's five androids. <laughs> or can you just Five get stars five on apples. Rating. Five apples. Five apples five on apples. Apple Play. And, and five thumbs up on Facebook. I think that's what they do. <laughs> I guess was that Facebook or YouTube? I don't know. I'm making stuff up. Whatever that gives us the high, the top thing, the up of any of that. Thank you so much for listening, guys. But before I forget, Alex, mm. what you been playing? So, uh, let me see. I uh, a thousand control. Ooh, yes. How was that? Was it Good. a fun thousand or was it actually, one of those yes, where you got to do garbage? No, and... actually, I actually really enjoyed myself because really? I mean, every time we got on, I was like. I was playing control because I was like, I want, I want to do it. Like right. I was actually, uh, it's not that like I had to. I'm like, oh, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to go back and do it. Like it mm-hmm. was fun. And mm-hmm. the only one that was giving me trouble was like, I didn't had enough ability points for to get all the abilities. Right. For that last trophy, and apparently there's hidden locations, and every hidden location gives you one ability point. So I had to do. There's 20 uh, hidden locations, but I didn't have to do them all because I found one that if you do some, yeah, I forgot what it was. If you, I find this. Uh, that gives you three. So I only need three more, and I was like, oh, well, I'm done. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, that didn't sound that bad. No, it was I still need to do fun. it. I'm waiting for the mood to strike me. Yeah, I was in the mood the whole time, and then we went to Gears. Mm-hmm. We did. Yes. We did Gears 5. We're going to try to finish that tonight. Fantastic. We'll get a spoiler cast up for you guys yeah. soon, of course. God, it's so good. But it's so good, right? Early impressions, a little more. Early than early impressions. We're about halfway through, right? Good story so far. I like it. Yeah, oh, fantastic story, right? Yeah. I love the callbacks. I Plenty like of callbacks. It. Weapons always feel great. <clears throat> like I said, as always. Feels story great. story so far since we're, I think we're at least half, we're, we're we a should, more than halfway. Yeah, we're right? more than halfway. How are, we, how are you liking it compared to the last one? I like where it's so going. I think the last one was more of a... Introduction? Because, y- y- yeah, I think it was an introduction and practice for yeah. the team. Yeah. Where it's like, let's figure out what Gears is. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can kind of make what it is. Similar, it to, a, uh, similar to Force Awakens. Yeah. That Star Wars movie. Yeah. Where it's like, we're just going to remake the original movies and then we're going to make another one. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And, and I think that's what they did with this. Because then they had the confidence to move up to five to make something way different than what we would expect. Mm-hmm. I like where the story is going. No spoilers, of course. Got um, it. But, it's, uh, yeah, it's just cool what they're incorporating. Feel good with the guns. I like the Relic system yeah I like was, the yeah that was really open cool. world uh systems yeah i would say open world it's more open sandboxy it's not it's yeah. not huge but yeah it's, it's nice to play yeah it's not a spoiler but like in the trailers they show this like weird skiing glider looking yeah. thing yeah yeah that, that, it, that, it's fun that thing's fun a lot of fun to drive that yeah i don't want to like spoil banter's like, nice like then banter's what? nice between oh yeah yeah. And yeah the the dialogues and yeah, stuff like that that's it's, very it's nice cool. yeah written fantastically yes and um we caught kind of I would I would say, it, what's it called? You know, a surprise kind of in the story. I liked, uh, but it was kind of seen. I feel. Yeah, what okay. we just did. So like, I feel like that was kind of you saw that coming. Oh yeah, you talking we about can the, get more to yeah, in yeah. our review episode, of course. Uh, whenever we the, do a review, it, like a reveal that they showed in the game. Yeah, they revealed something, and it's like we kind of figured <clears> that out. Yeah, almost. we figured it's, it out, but it was still cool. Still cool. Still cool. Yeah. 
it was cool. <clears throat> uh, so we got some news today. Apple Arcade, that pricing. Um, Microsoft's Phil Spencer has played Project Scor- uh, Scarlet. Mm. And Ubisoft says, we're keeping with <clears throat> our thing. And we're not making anything else. Apple Arcade price release date confirmed over on GameSpot. Apple revealed new details about its arcade servers along with new game reveals. This was over on their Apple event as of yesterday, if I remember correctly. Which is an hour and 40-something minute long. Uh, you were really upset about that. What do you expect? It's, is it's, it supposed okay. to be 30 you, minutes? Well, no, but at, at least it's just an hour. An hour, mm. almost two they hours? That, that's, a, that's a movie. They got a new iPad. That's a movie. <laughs> they got a new iPad to go over. They had a new phone to go over, right? Yeah. I mean. They had the Splinter Cell phone. I haven't even seen any of this. Yeah, so it took a quick, uh, I'm sorry, one of the major lingering questions about Apple Arcade okay, was finally confirmed during April, uh, Apple's September event this week. Well, we knew it was coming this week, we didn't know how much it would cost. One of the most critical aspects of a subscription service like this. Fortunately, the company shared new details regarding its all-you-can-eat Apple Arcade subscription service on Tuesday. And that included confirming a release date on September 19th and a price point of $4.99 per month. The company will also announce they will have a free one-month trial, so you won't have to cough up any cash to check it out yourself. One subscription will allow a whole family to download and play the included games. That's cool. The announcement came as part of the stage presentation where Apple also detailed a few exclusives coming to the service. Apple said it will have 100 games, more exclusive at launch than any other service, and a dedicated arcade tab with new games added monthly. Some of the exclusives showed off were from Konami, Capcom, and Annapurna Interactive. Konami is bringing back Frogger with a new game developed by Q Games. Frogger will use bombs like uh, will use items like bombs to clear obstacles and can turn into Super Frogger. Capcom debuted. Shinsuke Into the Depths, an underwater exploration game, and Anna Pune announced Sonera Wild Hearts for the service. Very cool. Yeah, I am not a big mobile gamer, no. but I will think I will try it out. It's yeah, no, five something. bucks. That's oh, interesting God, yeah. Oh, yeah, for, for only five dollars for a month. Yeah. Apparently, the pricing works as um, <clears throat> they start off with five dollars, and the pricing goes to each developer depending on who spends the most time with what. So, fifty mm. percent of time spent on this Frogger game. Um, Konami will get fifty percent of that money. Yeah, interesting. Um, you're a big iPhone guy. You see yourself yeah. getting this? The uh, the, the arcade uh, arcade. Yeah. Ye- oh, there's a free. Isn't really there a free month? There's a free month. There's a free month. I might try it out try just it out. to be able to talk about it on the podcast. But yeah. I'll be honest, I'm not mm. a big mobile guy. Period. Yeah. I don't really play on my phone with games. Yeah. I'll be on Twitter and Instagram <clears> and <throat> the news. But yeah. other than that, I don't really use my phone for gaming purposes. Um. I don't know. I think I just play so many games. I don't need a phone to also play games. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I've tried to. It just depends on the game because I'm like... Mm. Well, I liked Florence a lot. That was a really good game. Yeah. I only do it when people scream at me. I have to play it. And Florence was screamed at me too. I had to play I was like, fine, I'll play this game. That yeah. was fantastic. So if something like that happens, maybe. I'll pay five bucks for a month and then just cancel it next month or something mm. like that. I don't plan on keeping this forever though if I do get it. Very cool. Alex, we have probably the most controversial um, topic that we've ever gone over on the show, and I do apologize if anyone gets hashtag triggered from any of this. <laughs> um, so be prepared, sit back, and be ready to consume. Oh, this God. is over on The Verge. PlayStation's X button is apparently called the cross button. This is over on The Verge again. For almost 25 years, Sony has made PlayStation controllers with an X as the main button. But according to a tweet from the PlayStation UK account, the button should not, in fact, be called the X button. Apparently, it's referred to as the cross button now I'm gonna be honest I knew this so I, get, I just kind of played along with everybody making fun of them and stuff but it's, it's not the cross it, it's always been called the cross even yeah. when they reference um, the thing and oh, I remember yeah. watching I don't know if it was a documentary or an article but mm. they went over the origins of the buttons um, the circle button is a map the square button is wait no the square button is a map the circle is something I don't remember. X is meant to be no, and triangle is meant to be yes, if I remember correctly. Hmm. No, no, sorry. Circle is yes. Tri- uh, X is no. Cross is no. <laughs> Square is map. Triangle is meant to be something else. I don't remember. But that was that's basically the origins of the buttons. They all have a specific <clears throat> meaning. I mean, I understand what they're trying to do because it's like X is not a shape. Right. They're all shapes, right? Yeah. Square, triangle, circle. And cross, cross, I guess. But like, <laughs> eh. Crisscross, applesauce. Yeah, I just, I don't like the way it sounds. Cross. Cross. cross yeah. X is faster. I'm yeah. going to say X for brevity's sake. Oh, God. Cross yeah. is nice. I'm always. We'll let those I'm people have their X. thing. It's like when people are like GIF. Or, and or GIF. Like, GIF. 
Yeah. It's GIF. GIF yeah. is the peanut butter. Yeah. GIF is GIF. Yeah. Because the people who made GIF said they called it GIF in studio. Hmm. You guys just stop making up words and say things right like Americans do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's called soccer, not football. You mean foot- <laughs> I'm just, you I'm football? Just, I'm just making people angry now. <laughs> yep, probably. I'm just with you guys. I love you. We're going to get so many random comments and be like, I hate you. I'm not even going to remember it, too. They're going to be like, it's football. I'm like, I know it's football. Why are you upset? Yeah, right? And you'll be like, what did I do? I know, right? Moving on. Microsoft's Phil Spencer played first Xbox Horror games this week. It's over on Windows Central. Mm. Um, this is a basically a brief synopsis of what the article is. Today, Xbox Phil Spencer and Bungie's Pete Parsons streamed Destiny 2 together. During the live stream, many gamers heard Spencer said he played the first Xbox Scarlet games this week. Xbox Scarlet is up, uh, Microsoft's upcoming console for holiday 2020. It is unclear if it's going to be more powerful than slowly PlayStation 5 at this time. Mm. Very cool. It was kind of yeah. a, one of those, like, <clears throat> of course, of course he's played it. But I thought yeah. it was a cool thing to include. Uh, and uh, that was a cool thing they did. They kind of collabed with Bungie to do a Destiny 2, which I feel like all this Xbox talk with Bungie and all that is more of a um, show of respect. Do you understand? Because mm-hmm. they used to work together. Yeah. And they kind of distanced <laughs> themselves and went straight over to PlayStation and got a bunch of money from Destiny 2 and gave them exclusive content. Yeah. And it looks like now they're just kind of men fences, it looks like. Because mm-hmm. they've been doing this kind of stuff. They were at a... What was it called? XO19? Was that what it was called? No. Yeah. Inst- yeah. Was it called? Yeah, X- yeah okay. XO19. Yeah, they were there Mexico. showing yeah. off exclusive Shadow Keep stuff. Yep. And I think this is just more of that. So it's nice to see Bungie back on a Microsoft stage. Just like old times. Alex, this is over on IGN. Ubisoft will not return to creating shorter games, says CEO. Ubisoft will continue to focus on huge open world games that take many hours to play, but has a goal to provide smaller scale adventures within what larger worlds, says company CEO. Talking to Game Industry up Biz Eves Guillemot said no <laughs> to the question of if the company would ever return to games to the scale of Assassin's Creed Unity, in which the main story can easily be finished in around 15 hours. There's a brief, brief treat compared to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which on average takes up to 60 hours of player's time. Alex, from that brief paragraph, what do you think? I mean, I don't mind. I love Ubisoft games mm-hmm. like Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they were this short, doesn't upset you at all? Like, Odyssey is a long game, so like, you don't want a shorter game. No, I mean, I'm content with it. I don't either. You just so don't, do just don't. You. If you're gonna make a long game, don't drag it out. Yeah, very important, right? Yeah, don't important. drag it out. I think Odyssey did really well that. Oh God, yes. Because you have feelings throughout the whole game where it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. where is the seed bringing me to? And eventually you find it within the brother yeah. or sister, depending on who you play. Yeah. And then you figure out, okay, this is the overlining story I've been trying to find. Yep. And then you follow that around, kill every cultist possible because that's the best part of the game. Yeah. Hunting these people down and murdering them viciously as possible. Um, our goal is to make sure you have a unity within a odyssey, <laughs> said Gilmore. That's confusing. Yep. If you want an hour, if you want to have a story of 15 hours, you can have it. You can also have other stories. You live in that world and you pursue what you want to pursue. You have experience. Many unity-like experiences. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's a, g- a good way of putting it, I think. Um, a very smart way of putting it, too. If you want unity, play odyssey and play 15 hours and pick an adventure. That would be hard to do, and I don't think that's a good sell for a consumer. Mm. You buy the sixty dollar game and only pay fifteen hours of it. I, yeah, I don't think that's yeah, cause sit I'm well to think with most even, people. I'm even trying to think of like which Ubisoft game was short. It's been a long time. That's why um, I can't think of it. I mean, you'd have to go back to like the weird games, Sam and Max and Rayman and all that. I mean, I like, guess when yeah. you have to go back to those. Yeah, those are just off the top of my head too. Yeah, because I can't think Rab- of anything. Rabbits. Else. Little, yeah, because I mean, things. even like for example, even South Park that took a while. I mean, they said Assassin's Creed Unity is short, which I know honestly never thought about it. I mean, it's still an Assassin's Creed, so it's still big open world. I didn't, I don't count yeah. that as short. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, feel I like guess I'm you meaning, can say it's short if the main story can be completed so I, fast. I never thought it could be completed that fast, honestly. I, I feel, feel like, like it was way longer. I feel like that. meaning short wise, remember how like more bugged that game was? Yes, I had that scene where that dude's mouth is just exposed. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. settling. Um. I feel like um, 15 hours would be more linear like than right, these open worlds, right. so I can't think yeah. of anything, really. Yeah, I can't, I can't either. Um, good on Ubisoft. That's what I want from Ubisoft. I oh, want God, these yeah. games. Um, uh, do I like linear experiences? Of course. I love Uncharted and yeah. God of War. Those are yeah. those thing, Those games have places. If yeah. they don't want to make them, don't make them. Yeah, because I was about to say, I want to I be I will never force any not, developer to make something. Because yeah. then I'm just going to get hot garbage. <coughs> Mirror's Edge. <laughs> Sorry, I listen. I like Mirror's Edge. At least I mean, uh, Mirror's. Did you beat it? Yeah, I beat both of them. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I beat both. I, no, of them. I liked one. Yeah. And two was fine. It's just 
I actually really like two because you can just run around everywhere the whole map. Yeah, it's more I, free I room. I don't. I'm not saying I hate it. Just two. I don't know. Something just rubbed me the wrong way. I mm-hmm. felt great running around, but yeah. anything else about the game I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. Google Stadia will offer free game trials, Alex. You can jump on and not have to pay like a hundred bucks or something. I don't remember how much it is now. It was oh, I'm bad at my job. I feel like it was. No, like, it's a pro membership, right? So it's like ten bucks a month, I think. I think the pro thing is one forty. Basic is free. Pro should be like ten dollars. It's probably an article. Google Stadia will have a game. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is by Oscar Gonzalez on CNET. CNET. Let's go over. Um, Google Stadia will have game trials, support for mods, and live stream options. Interesting. John Justice, Google Stadia's VP and head of product, said Sunday, he said there's also a push for cross-platform saves on all games, which is what I want. Justice was a guest on the Stadia cast, a Google Stadia-focused podcast. During the interview, he revealed game demos will be coming to the cloud gaming subscription service, but not just how <clears> to try <throat> new games. There will also be trials to allow people to test out Stadia themselves. Cool. Yeah, there's not much else here. Well, actually, there is a good bit, but another thing very important, honestly. Um, I think what's most important is the streaming and the mods, which is interesting. Yeah, that you can mod a game you're actively streaming through the cloud. That's you. That is me. Oh, that is me. I thought that was you. Nope, I muted it before I realized because there was something about to pop up, and I was like, "Shit, no!" <laughs> oh God, no! I apologize for that. You for that. God, what was you? it? I don't even know what ad it was, so I can't even make a fun of it. Ads are dumb. <laughs> and anyways, yeah, it was cool. Uh, I, like I said, curious on how mods will work on a game you're streaming actively through the internet. I guess you would just plug it in, and then the <laughs> game does the rest. Yeah, it's weird. Very weird. Um, if they support cross-port from uh, platform saves enough, I might pay for it. Because if I can play it on my phone while waiting for... I don't know, like I'm at a break at work and I'm like, oh, let me pop on. I take out my controller and play Stadia real quick. That'd be yeah, cool. I thought they said that already. Because it says you can play it anywhere, like on your phone, computer, or anything. No, no, no. So, but I want to have my saves everywhere. I think that should, it's, it's all, yeah, it should be fine. No, no, so you, I want my Xbox save on Sta- That's what I'm saying. Cross platform saves. Co- yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross platform yeah, yeah, yeah. save. Cross platform. Just cross. Yeah, because it has cross save. Never, yeah, no, it has cross save. Yeah, just not you can cross play it on platform. anything. Just, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I want to play this thing everywhere. And I want it on my Xbox because I'm, I'm not replacing my Xbox. So, oh like, God, no. it, I'm just going to be using this as a second Xbox that I can play on my iPad or whatever. Yeah. Which it would be I just don't think it'll happen. No, I don't think so either. I, I think cross-platform saves are still a while away, but I want them everywhere because why not? Yeah. Alex, this is a funny story. Uh-huh. Smash Bros. creator just made Xbox trend on Twitter in Japan. <laughs> this gentleman did in about five minutes what Xbox has never been able to do in their entire history <clears throat> of existing. During a special Nintendo Direct for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, uh, Mr. Sakiro-san introduced the Banjo-Kazooie DLC. Not only does he want you to get that, he also wants you to play the original game on Xbox. The original Banjo-Kazooie games were released on Nintendo hardware, but as Sakiro explained, Microsoft now owns the rights to the series. In 2002, Microsoft bought Rare, the studio behind Banjo and Kazooie, from Nintendo. Sakurai acknowledged that Microsoft and Nintendo have rival platforms, but the American tech giant is allowing Banjo Kazooie to enter into the fray in this Switch game. I'm incredibly grateful, Sakura said. He's so grateful that he's willing to recommend that rival's platform. If you're going to play Banjo Kazooie, you can play it on Xbox, Sakura said, causing the uh, people filming the direct to giggle off camera. Did, oh my god, really? I'm saying this even though this is a Nintendo broadcast. Please, by all means, play it on an Xbox. Wow, I didn't know it was that direct. And I love that people giggled off camera. That's amazing to think. People are just like, he just said Xbox. After saying this word Xbox, I like that it said it like some sort of foreign word Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> Xbox started trending on Twitter in Japan, even reached number one spot, which is insane. Microsoft has always had a hard time reaching players in Japan. Maybe it should have listed Sakura's help sooner. Yeah. That's funny. They have always, like they said, had trouble in Japan. Um, for whatever reason, Japan just doesn't care about xbox and i think it's because most of the time they're on the go mm-hmm. so they're actively moving around and and it's not the same like here where it's we're lazy <laughs> sure yeah let's go with that <laughs> but we're not at home as much they're constantly doing public transportation oh god yeah no they so have, they're that's all they on the switch the subways and the, and the vita was huge there oh god didn't yes. do anything here of course but the vita was huge there so people love that stuff there i mean so, that's why they had so many it, other different colors and stuff 
I know. I didn't import mine, and then they released it here anyways. So Did they really? Upset. I never know they released it here. Your, yeah, I'm pretty your sure. Yoshi colored one? I thought so. The white and green one? I don't think they ever released it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, all, the aqua blue one, they, the one that I have, they released it here. That was the only other one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay. I was right. Okay, so the lime one only released in Japan. Yeah. Okay, so I don't regret it anymore then. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. You've saved me years and years of regret. I'm not sure. <laughs> Alex, we got a funny <clears throat> but terrible story at the same time, but it's kind of funny, but mm. it's also super racist. So, like... I don't think if racist and funny would go in the same word or sentence. Uh, let's let's see. Let's There's see plenty what, of funny racist things. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Zifu has used a racial slur during a Twitch stream. Will it be his third strike? God. Silver on fours by Dave Thier. All right, let's get into this because this dude dropped some serious, serious stuff. Turner Tifu Tini? Tenny. Is, Tenny. Thank you. Is making a lot of headlines these days, and not always for good, re- great reasons. The popular Twitch streamer is reliable for one of the biggest draws for the streaming service, but he's not quite as clean as Tyler Ninja Blevins, and even Ninja has had his moments of controversy. Tifu recently used a racial slur during a Minecraft stream before deleting the clip. I don't think he knows how the internet works, Alex. Yeah, right. Uh, Tifu is one of the more visible personalities on the internet. However, so it was quickly pre- uh, preserved by. Any number of sources. You can watch, listen to the clip below. Oh, good Lord. They'll be warned that the clip does contain a racial slur. Uh, yeah, and there's even Twitter things. Uh, Tifu has yet to comment, of course. This instance is particularly noteworthy because Twitch has a three-strike policy in situations like this, and this could theoretically be Tenny's third strike. Tifu has earned two suspensions in the past, one for using a different, a different racial epithet and one for unclear toxic behavior in his chat. Twitch is clear about what happens when you mess up three times as per its community guidelines. After two strikes, the next violation will result in an indefinite suspension, but some severe violations result in an indefinite suspension on the first violation. If Twitch decides that this incident violates its community guidelines, then it's clear that Tifu would receive an indefinite <coughs> suspension. So far, however, the company isn't saying anything. I've contacted Twitch for comment and will update with a response. Of course, there is no update because this gentleman is not being banned from Twitch I knew he wouldn't be, even though for calling out a very clear racial slur in this. Um, Twitch recently lost Ninja, one of its biggest stars, to an exclusive deal with Microsoft Mixer's platform. That means that losing Tifu and his nearly 7 million subscribers, that's insane, would be another major loss for the platform. Not acting, however, would create that might be even a bigger headache. Twitch has been criticized many times for failing to enforce its own standards with its most popular streamers, and many would view this as a major violation of trust between the streamer community and the company that hosts them. We will see what happens. Jesus. Again, Forbes, Dave Thier. I don't think I uh, gave the guy a shout out. Interesting, Alex. Um, how would you handle this if you're over at Twitch? You are Mr. Twitch. Oh, God. You have seen that Mr. Tifu, who gives you lots of money, has dropped... The second <laughs> racial you slur. You mean third? Oh, the second, yeah. Second, and the second time strike. he got in, in trouble for an unclear toxic behavior in his chat. I don't know what that <sighs> is. I mean, I feel like if it was me, I would feel like, I, I guess I would have to be like, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Be Interesting. Tra- That's be- a lot of money. You're saying no to about $30 million a month. I <sighs> I mean, well, you're. I mean, they're paying him too, aren't they? But like, yeah, then they're gonna be percentages. But if the they subs. keep him, they're gonna be like, oh, Twitch promotes, you know, racists, right. and then Twitch is just gonna lose right. in general. So interesting yeah. situation. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard. This was posted. I don't feel September fifth, like, <clears throat> and this is September eleventh today. Mm-hmm. I would love an update on the story. I don't if feel you, like if you can do a quick bing search for me please because on this easy achievers podcast we use bing because we have (laughs) self-respect i'm just kidding (laughs) i just like joking um but i do think it's interesting and um i don't know this tifu gentleman specifically so i cannot speak if he is a racist or not he did use a racist term and it would be different if he didn't just immediately delete the clip i don't know what deleting the clip does uh bro you're on the internet um, it would have been better if he would been like, whoops, I messed up. Um, here, I'll make a donate to a great black charity or something like that. But no, he deletes the tweet and act like never happening. Um, any updates on this, Mr. Uh, Alejandro? Not seeing anything. Nothing? Mm-hmm. I didn't think anything would come up this, so I'm not surprised that no one... I, it, you know what Twitch did? Mm. Twitch saw this, 
looked at their their the, the buddy on the side and he was like, "All right, Jim, we're gonna wait this out and see what happens." And they waited it out, and no one's talking about it now. Yep, that's what happens. Yep, so and then they'd be like, "We just let it go." Yeah, let's just see, see. We just pretend like we didn't hear it. Like I can just imagine the guy in Twitch being like, "What was that? What was that? I didn't hear you." I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. And then now we're just going to pretend like it didn't happen. Yep. Moving on, because that was kind of a waste of time. Kotaku.com. Jason Schreier. Borderlands 3 review situation sure is strange. Now, this is a interesting story, and it has layers. So we're going to start peeling some of those back. Mm. Like an onion. I love Vidalia onions, don't you? Vidalia onions? I yeah. guess so. The yeah. sweet ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good. Borderlands 3 reviews hit the internet this morning as of... Uh, writing up but only a select few websites thanks to a bizarre scenario that published 2k says is in place because of security concerns typically if video game pr- reviewers work off early retail copies of games provided by publishers they can be either digital or physical and they function like any other game you'd buy in the store our forthcoming review of zelda's link's awakening for example will be based <coughs> on an early retail code provided by a nintendo that functions just like the proper game will when it comes out in the eShop. Occasionally, game uh, publishers will send out very early game builds on, quote, debug consoles, end quote, that work a little differently. But these days, that's rare. Usually, reviewers are playing the same game that everyone else will just a week or two early. Er. In the case of Borderlands 3, which comes out Friday for PC and consoles, things are a little unusual. Rather than sending out codes for the game, 2K gave reviewers special ex- ec- uh, Epic Game Store accounts loaded up with early work-in-progress builds for... Four, Borderlands 3. A bizarre scenario that we've never seen before, as Polygon explained in their review. Um, this is from the Polygon Review. 2K Games and Gearbox did not send out review codes for Borderlands 3. Instead, they sent reviewers up with new Epic Game Store accounts with the game unlocked. And gave us a few warnings about the game being a work in progress. They asked us to stay away from the Direct X12 implementation. Alex, that's my favorite implementation. If I have to give it to one Direct X12, mm-hmm. it would be that specific implementation that would be my favorite, of course. Okay. For example, that told us that our progress in these builds may or may not cover, carry over to the final game. Great. <laughs> As a result, Polygon reviewer Ben Kuchier wrote, he and some of his colleagues ran into a, some severe technical issues, including random crashes, and in one case, someone losing six hours of progress and having to start oh, from scratch. No. Some other reviewers complained of technical problems. Others did not. Kotaku requested access to Borderlands 3 for review, but did not get access. A representative of 2K cited security concerns and told us we'd get a code for a much-anticipated loot, sh- loot shooter on Thursday, September 12th, the day before it launches. We'll do our best to get you coverage as soon as we can. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, the website VG247 reports that they and their fellow European video game outlets have also not gotten their codes for security reasons. This all comes a month after 2K and his partner company Take Two went after a YouTuber who was posting leaked information about the game. We covered that two weeks ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. This is interesting. Um, I do not see the point of the article, to be honest with you. I thought it was interesting to bring up Kotaku, a huge site, and they did not get codes. So yeah. I'm very curious if they're just saying... I think it's maybe because they have been having all those issues. So they were like, we don't want to keep giving out these codes. And then the people, more people, like more people would like review it bad. Mm. So, Interesting. So maybe they're just going to like the people who, who did get codes. Are re- Do you think it's because 2K has something against Kotaku? Uh, this is just, of course, speculation on our part. Know. And we can only speculate because 2K has not given a direct statement. Well, they're, they're just co- saying security reasons, which is a very vague well, they term. Haven't, well, they're not the only ones who have gotten codes either, though. Yeah. That's a good point. Like the VG people. Uh, VG people, yeah. yeah Others they, said they didn't get the code either. Yeah. Very interestingly, you say security reasons, though. Maybe because it's a very sensitive thing they have to send out. I guess, maybe. Maybe the, the store that's open is, they don't want to be, what's the word, bypassed by anyone else other than the yeah. people they want to specifically give this grant access. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It does come across as, we didn't get the codes when, a little bit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be mean, of course. I'm just saying. I mean, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, it does sound like a little, a little bit. But that is their job, though. Yeah. I would be upset if I had a job to do and someone did not give me the, the ability res- to the do my job. Support. Yeah, because that, that's something I hear a lot from people in the game industry. Um, you ever heard of the review events? Yes. I'm sure you have. Um, if you don't know, uh, 
lots of times when a game is coming out, they have these kind of big events that kind of celebrate the game, but it kind of gets in the way. So, for instance, um, Joe Schmo at IGN gets invited to a review event for, let's say, Borderlands 3. He goes over to Borderlands 3. He goes to Malibu to review this game. Goes to Malibu. They have an awesome event with hula dancers and ham and whatever. Joe Schmo eats ham and dances with hula dancers. But then Joe Schmo comes back and is like, that was a lot of waste of time. And now I have a week of work to do because I was gone eating ham and hula dancing. Mm -hmm. But no game. And no game. So it's an interesting perspective where it does sound like they're in their ivory tower complaining, oh, I didn't get a game for free. But in reality, they're kind of being like, we can't just do our jobs because we kind of just want to write up the review and then move on to the next game. Yeah. Any lasting thoughts, Alex? I just hope that these bugs get fixed, whatever that they were having issues with. Oh, are you nervous about the yeah. day one day one build? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little nervous about it because it's, I mean, it, it's an online looter shooter. So, so the thing I'm worried about is that crash. That is very scary. That, that's my thing, yeah. Six hours of progress is nothing that, to sniff about, especially with people with jobs that uh, demand attention. Yeah. And who can only squeak in maybe an hour or two. Yep. If you can only squeak an hour or two and you lose half that progress, that just demolishes you and you just move on to the yeah. next game at that like point. Sometimes, I mean, we like uh, you and uh, you or I yeah. only like we get home late and then we're like, man, we only got a little bit of time. I look I'll at the time hour, I'm like, and it's two o'clock already. God, mm-hmm. I gotta go and to sometimes, bed. like, you play an hour and you're like, I'm just gonna go to bed, you know, stuff like yep. that. It sucks. But if I lost 10 hours of progress, mm. I would have to force myself to play another 10 hours of the game to get to the exact same point I was before. Remember what happened with Watch Dogs? Yep, Watch Dogs. The infamous Alex oh, situation God. where his... I was almost done with this game. <laughs> and someone overloaded your save, not paying attention. Yep, and then I had nothing. So I, I waited about two, three weeks, and then I And then polished the game off in almost two days, I think it was. Yep. Yep. I played that game nonstop because I loved Watch Dogs too. Alex, do you like Last of Us too? God, yeah. Good answer. Alex, because we have the Last of Us Part Two media event. <gasps> event. This is over on Twitter, on Jeff Keighley's Twitter, because he's cool. Oh, he retweeted man. over at Los Angeles, California, on the twenty fourth of September, twenty nineteen. There will be a Last of Us Part Two event. Oh man! Please All right, Alex. Now we speculate. What's going to be here? What do they show off? Release date. The yes, I. Th- Thoughts exactly that we get a release date for March fifteenth. March, yeah. I don't know. I, I just. I'm okay. thinking I March. I'm thinking March as well. I'm thinking March, mid Tuesday, middle of the month. Yeah. They're gonna plant their flag and be like, and and we're gonna watch as everyone runs from March. <laughs> no, but it, I'll be honest. I don't think it's gonna be March. I think it will probably be Tuesday or oh sorry February, or uh, May. Yeah, one of those months. Sorry, I was seeing one of what? the one of the gifts that are at the bottom. Oh my here. god, I gotta see this! And uh, it's the office, and it's uh, the uh, Steve Carroll's character. Mm-hmm. He comes out of the office, and he's like, "Oh my god, okay, it's happening!" <laughs> That's an awesome, <laughs> awesome episode. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Like, I just because because I can imagine his voice and stuff, and because I, I it was him and Jim Carrey. I always yeah. loved them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is hilarious. Yep, it's awesome. This is a funny one. It's uh, it's it's Joel screaming it up in the air. Yeah, Jesus. look at the one on right underneath it. It says it's a washing machine. It's a small, <laughs> medium, large, and lar- and then it says it's load size, and it's a go- dude going with his mouth open. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> very excited for Last of Us Part Two. Very interested in what they show off. We're getting a new trailer, of course, and we're getting a release date. I don't think we see much other than that, though. Yeah. Interesting that they're bringing out media for this, though. I feel Maybe like we'll get an inv- invite. <laughs> God, I wish. Will you fly out to Los Angeles if we get an invite, Alex? Yes. No, you won't. It's $1,000, probably. <laughs> Do we got to pay for it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They don't pay for the flight. They give us the invite. Good point. <laughs> oh, this is a rumor uh, over on Games Radar uh, by an Alex Avard. Alex, is you? No. Under a pseudonym? Uh, 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 moving on Alex Arda <laughs> new rumors suggest the PS5 will launch with a battle royale game but not the one you're thinking of <gasps> PlayStation is also a battle royale in the works for PS5 stars Aloy Spider-Man and more interesting before Fortnite was even a twinkle in your epic games eyes there was a PlayStation all-stars battle royale which is very interesting Alex when you release a game called battle royale it is completely different f- 
seven years later. Yeah. Because if you say that, now it's 100 PlayStation characters fighting in an arena <laughs> until one is left. Yep. And this one was basically Super Smash Brothers, but worse. Uh, do, 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 do. To be honest, the game wasn't great. <laughs> I enjoyed it at the time. <laughs> Not least because PlayStation roster of game masters weren't nearly as extensive or familiar as those finding Nintendo's pantheon of heroes and villains. Of course it wasn't. That and the fact that All-Stars Combat felt somewhat floaty and uneven, which undercut its sea legs as to a go-to for gaming tournaments. That doesn't seem to phase Sony, however, as a new rumor has suggested that a PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale sequel is in the works and may even be releasing as a launch title for PS5 as early as next year. The leak comes from a supposed Capcom employee who posted the information on 4chan, <laughs> meaning it's hardly a verified source, but nonetheless worth paying attention well, to purely post the information? for the curiosity factor of such a prediction. According to this user, Capcom USA is working on a game in collaboration with Sony after the project was embarked and canceled multiple times throughout the PS4's uh, life cycle. USA, by the way. Did I not say that? Sorry. You said USA, U- USAA, like like the Did company, really? yeah. USAA, yeah. That's, that's awesome. What, yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> that's what I, was going, I was like, wait, what? I am a big fan of USA. USA. Okay? USA. All right, okay. they're an official sponsor. They USAA. Have, they have great customers. Come service. bank with us. It's a bank, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a military like like thingy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're like military, if you're like military dependent, that people usually get. Either. I was got confused with, uh, like an insurance company. The AARP one? Probably. I think it's that. What is that? Like life insurance? Yeah. AARP. I think it's life insurance. Okay. Moving anyway. on. <laughs> Potential characters. Uh, Spider-Man, PS4, Aloy from Horizon, Kratos from 2018's God of War, and even Spyro and Crash in light of the recent mm. return to gaming. Thanks to Crash, Insane Trilogy, and Spyro. Reignite Trilogy. Boy. Interesting. Do you care for this? Uh, kind of. I'm assuming I li- they're going to revamp the gameplay, so I'll take yeah. it. Oh, but yeah, because the gameplay I mean, has I to be revamped because it was not that good. I played the first one. I have it on the Vita, and I mean, I, sometimes I enjoyed it. Like, I, if I needed just. I do like that you said sometimes I enjoyed it's it. It's because. <laughs> I, I liked it sometimes. Well, it's because <laughs> the times that I did, I was like, it was like the first couple fights, and then I kept playing it, and then I'm like, all right, I'm done. So I didn't enjoy it. It's that definitely one of those games where it's like. It's not like, yeah. This it? Yeah. Okay, it's over. Yeah, I wish there was more people. I wish there was more people. I wish it was better gameplay. I'm excited. I will hold my breath, though, because I don't really even believe this is happening. Because, mm. again, this was a random person on 4chan. And we know the validity of 4chan, everybody. I think it'll happen. Alex, unbutton your shirt a little bit because it's getting a little steamy in here. Mm. The KFC Colonel Sanders dating sim is totally oh, real. This is over on CNN by Amanda Kuser. Look at that sweet little piece of meat. White meat, to be specific. <laughs> you dated a dinosaur. You romance a pigeon. Now it's time to pursue the colonel. I love you, Colonel Sangers. A finger licking good dating simulator has what? appeared on a gaming site, Steve. And yes, we're not making that up. It has a trailer video still has a <laughs> that places you have as a culinary school student trying to date your classmate, Colonel Sanders. Wow. KOC's founder and mascot looks simultaneously old and young as a buff. Androgynous, Adro- uh, thank prematurely you. gray hipster yep. who definitely would be willing to try KFC's new plant-based nuggets. Plant-based nuggets. Yeah, you haven't seen this? No. They're trying plant-based um, chicken. Wow. You know how they had the Beyond Burger? Yeah. Basically, they're trying to make a fried gotcha. chicken equivalent to the Beyond Burger. God, okay. I'll try anything. Go ahead, you can get anything. anything. You were just laughing. The, so game, take over. the game promises hours of play through secret recipes and quote, life-changing decisions, end quote, that will have real consequences with real animated characters' feelings at stake. I like that. Real animated is uh, like an, uh, what's it called? An oxymoron? Yeah. Yeah, an oxymoron where it's like jumbo shrimp. Yeah. Our business question, really? The game description to answer this, officially created by KFC. No, really. I called the KFC Media Hotline and left a message just in case. I heard back from KFC with, yes, it is true. The game is free and will be available starting September 24th. My players, are you going to try it? No, but if we did a I let's play, I would play it with you. I'll try it. This anime kernel is a far cry from the Fried Chicken Empire's other recent incarnations of the man, the soft, comically Sean Ashton version, and the apparently official Halloween costume. Interesting. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to say, I like, I like animes, but I was like, this is interesting. And this is to be fun. Yeah. This is to be fun. Look and look it's look it's look meant look to be hip. This, man. It's meant to get this. Whoop, I accidentally clicked on something. Freaky fast food from black buns to Batman burgers. Black cheese on black buns. Oh, this looks disgusting. What's no. up with people eating black bean, like 
like Relax. it's like the Halloween thing. It's like they, they make every like the buns or whatever or the ketchup. What was it? The ketchup purple and like green or not green orange. That's what it was. Remember oh yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah, they that was Halloween. Halloween. Remember they had purple ketchup too? Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Sorry, that's purple. Was it purple? Yeah, it was purple and orange, Ugh, just for Halloween colors. That's disgusting. It messes with your eyes because you're not expecting it to be ketchup. Yeah, because I yeah because I think I, it's gonna I, be something. I looked else. at it. I'm like, what the heck is this? Alex, did you know that there was a dark side burger and a light side burger? The boutique uh, burger competition no? got off to a brisk start back in 2012 with a European chain quick offering Star Wars themed burgers. Hungry sci fi fans could choose between a dark burger, poppy seed bun, or a Jedi burger. <laughs> Weird, unidentified white bits sticking out. <laughs> Both <laughs> came with cheese, so at least the Sith and Jedi had something in common. What is that? I guess it's potatoes or no, it's cheese. It's just bits of cheese. Interesting. This is weird. This is just weird fast food stuff. And oh, there's a Batman burger. He's he's, to, he's I've, lost. I've into got to the I've got to move on. I've got to move. On. We're in another sad story. I should have grouped these up a little bit closer. But <clears throat> GameStop closing 180 to 200 stores this year. This is over by Rebecca Spear on Windows Central again. Um, this is a brief synopsis. GameStop will close 180 to 200 stores by the end of 2019. The chain recently laid off 50 field leaders in August. The video game retailer currently has 5,700 5, stores worldwide. Jesus. GameStop says it's planning to close even more stores within the next two years. For the past several years, GameStop has been a staple for many gamers, but recently the company hasn't been doing so well. Like many other retailers, it's found it difficult to stay afloat from the ever-increasing of online shopping. Today, GameStop announced that due to a struggling Q2, the company will be closing 182 to 200 underperforming stores by the end of 2019. The company went on to say that it plans on closing additional stores within the next couple of years. This does come as much as a shock. The company had lost a total of, and brace yourself for this, four hundred and fifteen million dollars in Q2, which just adds up to the 2018 net loss of six hundred and seventy-five million dollars. The company recently laid off fifty regional district leaders leaders in early August, as well as seven Game Informer staff. Jesus. Hearts go out to everybody affected. Of course, no yeah. one's been affected yet, of course, because they're ending this. They're going to start closures. Um, they're probably going to ride out the holiday and then announce everyone who's getting axed. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, of course. Yeah, they're probably going to do that thing. So let's see which store promote or uh, did the least during the holidays. And which then they'll probably take is those out. bad because yeah. it makes everyone sweat. Everybody, oh God, yeah. regardless if you're number one store, you still oh gosh, a yeah, because I mean you're freaking out. You're like, oh god, my store is gonna close. Oh my god, my store is gonna close. Everyone, everyone's gonna talk, and everyone's gonna be sweating a little bit, being yep. like, ah, is it me? Is it me? Is, it, is it still yep. me? Like, who's gonna close? It yep. will, I heard, I heard this store closing. It's just really those stores close. are gonna get people coming in and be like, hey, are you closing? I yep. heard this. Yep, I heard it's closing, and then you and then you gotta be like, no, I'm not closing, or just be like, or the, or you say the much more exciting, yeah, I am. And this is my last day, and you take a sword out, and you're like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you go out with you'll a be bang. The, you'll be like that one dude in the video that got upset because he couldn't return that one game. I forgot oh, what God, it was. I remember that. Uh, and uh, it was just, uh, MB, no, Madden. I forgot what game it was, but he just he like trashed, trashed the, store. the store and just yeah. got all upset. And then the dude filming, he turned, he's like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And then it ends with the guy getting answering a phone call. Thank you for calling GameStop. This is Brian. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to that dude. He, he kept oh, his yeah. composure. I oh, God, have. yeah. I wouldn't have. I would have jumped over the counter probably. Civ 6. Oh, sorry. We're moving on a little too quickly. Anything to end on? No, just so, yeah, same. Uh, our hearts go out to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it sucks to know that... Hey, you might you might lose your job, and then them receding back into the darkness that is their yeah, like, uh, portfolio yeah. strategies. Moving on, Civ Six launches a battle royale mode called Red Death. This is over on PC Gamer by Christopher Livingston. Of course, if you all know, I live for Civ Six, and I love that stuff. So I decided to put a little battle royale That's teaser for the Civ Six. And their battle royale is a pretty fluid and flexible game mode, since the concept of a bunch of players fighting to be the last one standing can fit into just about any kind of multiplayer game. So maybe it's not all that shocking. Uh, that yes, even Civ Six is getting a battle royale. That God. is Civilization Six. Just in case I am being a little too nerdy for you guys, I apologize. And it's got nukes. Civilization Six Red Dead Red Whoa, Death yeah. is out today, free for any current owners of Civilization Six. Red Death supports up to twelve players per match, uh, though there are a number of maps sizes suitable for smaller groups, including two-player duels. 
You can also play against AI-controlled opponents. You don't build civilization in a Civ 6 battle royale. It's far too late for that. Red Death takes place in a post-apocalyptic where cities are ruins, the landscape is lifeless, the oceans are acid, and a radioactive storm. The Red Death is slowly closing in on all sides, and it's probably Gandhi's self fault. <laughs> Rather than build a Civ, you manage a... Oh, sorry. Uh, wait, no. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Rather than build a Civ, you manage a post-apocalyptic faction comprised of mobile command units protecting a civilian unit. And if that civilian unit dies or is captured, you're out of the match. You explore the map with your units at a turn at a time. Opens you got additional units and level them up with XP. Meanwhile, the Red Death closes around you, forcing you into contact with other players and in an AI-controlled enemies and outposts in the ever-shrieking safe zone. I could see you playing this. Yeah, I could, I, I would definitely like, try, try it. Out. Yeah, because this just hankers me to go back to Civ. Of course, I love Civ. Was that your dog? Yes. That was yeah. terrifying. Yeah, he's under me. Are you okay, dog? Is that Mickey? Yeah. I love Mickey. Yeah. He's so adorable. Yeah. We gotta get this videotaped one day, or maybe we'll just show. We'll have a day where we show off our animals. Cause I got two cats, and you got seven have, dogs. <laughs> God no. <laughs> I have four dogs and two cats. Oh, that's I'm so far off <laughs> by and, one. Yeah, no, I have so many animals. I don't and soon to be I'm going to have a baby in the house. Ooh, mm. announced it on the podcast. He is going to be a dad. Uh, 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 I'm dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. congratulations of course. I'm sure everyone listening saying congratulations as well. Unless they hate kids. Then they're saying why. God. Yeah, but uh, I'm, it's I'm already stressed out. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. But this will make you unstressed out though. Oh well, yeah, no. Once once the baby's born, mm-hmm. I can't wait. We all cool. Yeah. yeah, Alex, I'm gonna invite some brevity into the situation, and I'm mm. going to lighten you up a little bit. Uh-oh. Surprise! NBA 2K20 is still full of BS microtransactions. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is over by Luke Plunkett <laughs> over still on Kotaku. <laughs> The NBA 2K series has, for years now, been an excellent basketball game beset on all sides by predatory microtransaction practices. If you're looking for a 2019 update on this eternal struggle, know that the core of NBA 2K20 is still rotten, and it's just not, from what I've played so far, quite as rotten as it's been in the last couple of years. Quite. Did I not say that? No, no, I just said oh, I'm just gotcha. rephrasing quite. 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 <laughs> Almost the entire NBA 2K experience is still built around VC. If you want to buy new shoes, you need VC. If you want to unlock animations, including even the most basic dunk, otherwise you're stuck doing layups, you need VC. Isn't that the most lamest thing, too? Yep. You're just doing layups and you can't dunk. You want to dunk. You want to do the Jordan dunk with one hand, baking it in there, or the Shaq one where you have both hands and you yep. slam it and you rip off the rim. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you... Uh, the only way you can flesh out your team in the hugely popular My Team multiplayer, you can even use VC to increase your player stats in My Career, the series flagship single player story mode. There's even a casino where the series twin pillars of brand, adortion, and in game gambling aren't hidden but celebrated. And it remains, as always, has been gross. There isn't another AAA game on the market, sports or otherwise, that comes close to trying to nickel and dime the players like this. This is a $60 video game that is asking you to buy it, take it home, then continually pay more money to engage in its core game modes. It's a console PC game with a physical appetite of a mobile gaming scam. Oh. I mean, look at the picture. It looks like there's a Wheel of Fortune on this. This straight up looks like Wheel picture Wheel of Fortune. Yep. It's just a wheel. Now spin the wheel, yep. and you're getting so like the, each selection. So there's like times two rep, Nike, 500 VC, times six Gatorade, Power, whatever that thing is, a Jordan logo, and then you just and you spin know what's it. bad, Alex. Hmm. I want to spin that. No. I want to see what I get. No, I hope I get the Jordan logo, Gatorade, or everything there's a, else. There's is an bad. Under Armour logo. I'll take Under Armour. Yeah, everything else can. Go somewhere. Go somewhere, though. But it's crazy. And I said this with the faintest of praise. Lessons have again been learned this year, much as there were last year's haircuts, or at least they have been. Uh, they have when it comes to my career. The only place I've had time to really sink my teeth into since the game's release last week, my career has always been the uh, place where 2K's Michael Chen Jackson have felt the most disgusting and out of place being a story driven single player game mode <laughs> are you laughing at what I'm looking at yes I am <laughs> is Mickey just <laughs> Mickey for whatever reason the dog is licking the table <laughs> yeah. and he's having a good time out, I was trying to figure out where he was I was like where'd he go and I looked at he's in your arms I looked to the side all I see is going yum, to town yum. on the corner of the table for whatever oh he's done now all right, I think he, I guess he got all the flavor he, out the, he, out the uh, table. Yeah, I guess he's like, all right, I licked it. I licked as much as I could lick it. 
<laughs> I was just I was so confused what was going on. Oh, this is a much lengthier article. I'm not going to get into everything. You get it. 2K asks for a lot of money, and it's very interesting yep. that it still gets a lot of money. So I'm not going to knock people's thing, but it's still weird that no one talks about it. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting when someone finally talked about it that I wanted to bring it up on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say, we know someone who plays 2K. I just, I need, we need to ask him if he uh, really gets into into that whole we thing. We need a quote. Yeah. <laughs> quote from Roy. <laughs> yep. Uh, which streams on Mixer by the name... Legacy.com. Legacy.com. Yep. Shout out to you, Roy. You are above average. Yeah, man. That's was, about as much as you get from me. I was going to say, the other, <laughs> the other day he was uh, streaming a couple things. Like, I was watching League, him play right? League. Yeah, you got excited for League and you played some yesterday, right? Yeah. I How is that still? Is still good? Yeah. It, okay, oh, cool. God. It's changed so much, though. Uh, In a good last, way? No, yeah. yeah it's it's okay. like more updated. Mm. The, everything looks a lot better. That's good. And um, then he played Blair Witch, which I, I kind of want to try. But I heard I it's do scary. Too. It looks terrifying. Yeah. It's meant to be more of an outlast, I think, just straight oh, up yeah, terrifying. Yeah. Just straight up terrifying. Um, I'm going to go real quick over some Fire Emblem Three Houses uh, DLC, free, of course. First, the update adds the new maddening difficulty setting for players looking for even more of a challenge. If you're able to clear maddening without beginning a new game, plus Nintendo teases that the uh, game's title screen will change. Additionally, Nintendo has increased the bonus renown for starting new game plus and implemented Procanus Bialis new male English voiceovers following abuse allegation that suffered regarding the previous voice actor. I don't even remember that. That's interesting. Hmm. Um, just for success, equip valuable items and challenge yourself in new auxiliary battles within the Fire Emblem Three Houses expansion pass wave 2 DLC available now. Uh, so, sorry, some of this is paid for, some of this is free. The update also, like, the difficulty is free. I need um, to go back and keep playing that game because yeah, it's, it's so good. good. I just haven't had time. The update also brings a new assortment of content for expansion pass holders. First, you'll find the following handful of helpful supplies waiting for you in Bylas Personal Quarters. Sacred Gale One Shoes, Movement Plus One, really good. Sacred Floral Robe, HP Plus Seven, really good. Sacred Snow Melt Drop, Strength Plus Three, very good. Sacred Moonstone, Speed Plus Three, very good. Mm-hmm. Expansion pass holders also have access to new loungewear outfits for Byleth and other characters, as well as glasses for Byleth. Running out the special rewards such as status up items and more gold. Finally, the update fixes assortment of bugs and other issues in the game. Super cool. Yeah. I love this stuff. And there's even patch notes if you run and get really nerdy like I do and read everything that's changed. You beat, you beat the game, right? I did. Okay. I did. I Are beat it of- with Blue Lions. I want to rebeat it with Black Eagles, and then yeah. I might might repeat it with the gotcha yellow. yeah because i'm black e- um i'm uh black eagles right now so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very interested in see what you do yeah, yeah black eagles yeah i want to go back into it i'm just like there's so many games now i'm like oh god i want time to go do it but we have like a new game like every week or two mm-hmm. so i'm like crap we should start something with like update or the update queue or something like that where we just go over like previous games that have getting updates and stuff like that yeah because this is another game that's getting an update this is Control. We were just talking about that at the beginning of the podcast. Yep. You've Control. been playing. Free DLC content includes f- photo mode and a challenging new game mode. Uh, and the, the, this is basically from Control.com. They went over everything that's planned in their upcoming release. Mm-hmm. They're get, adding a new game plus mode, oh, okay. which is cool. In December, we release a new game mode for Control we are currently calling Expeditions. This will be a challenging new end game mode in which Jesse must help uh, Secretary mm-hmm. Chief Arish explore the mysterious formation and its strange surroundings. Here you will face some of the greatest challenges that the oldest house can throw at you. You will need the best gear and ability to survive. Expeditions are free for all players. And now we're moving into expansion, which is the fully paid content that you have to be paying for. Moving ahead to 2020, there will be two full paid expansions that our team are hard at work in creating. The Foundation and AWE Awe. Both of these will offer new story missions, enemies, and game mechanics and take place in new locations within the oldest house. The Foundation will uh, delve into the history of the oldest house at the request of the ever-mysterious board. Jesse must explore what lies beneath the uh, yeah beneath the board as she re- returns order to the Foundation and the oldest house itself. Expect things to get weird. It was already pretty weird, but okay. <laughs> the second expansion, All, will take Jesse into a new part of the oldest house, the investigation sector, Ooh. where the Bureau closely examines altered world events. Finally, we would like to thank everyone from press to fans and the entire community for your support and feedback. The amazing response and control means the world for us. Keep it coming. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to add more um, achievements to it, too. Like, Because, uh, I mean, I have thousands. Usually they do, I right? more achievements now. Yeah, usually, usually they do. So. Oh, man, we got to wait this long? This is early 2020. Yeah, I wish and it was a little quicker. Similar to Spider-Man, where it's like, we're going to get everything within four months or something like that. Yeah. Um, the photo mode then looks cool in the next e- expeditions. Uh, I am bringing up a quick story over on Engadget because that story did not have what I wanted. Control DLC hints at an Alan Wake tie-in. 
Uh, mm. Remedy's game worlds might collide in a very conspicuous way. The vi- uh, studio has shared a roadmap for controls. We went over all that. And then there's a, uh, and there's a uh, so the second paid expansion all due in mid 2020 hints at a not so subtle crossover between Jesse's adventures and those of Alan Wake. Officially, the company has only said the DLC will have Jesse exploring a new investigation sector of the host that explores alter world events, hence the title. But there are multiple hints of a connection. Being careful, spoilers ahead. Um, I will really quick read this to begin with. The okay. So this isn't a spoiler, so I'm going to say this. To begin with, the Roadsman's teaser graphic includes a flashlight-wielding person in a forest that by uh-huh. itself may harken back to Alan's trouble in Bright Falls. There are also a number of Easter eggs in the game that we won't go over now because we went over that spoiler cast. By the way, we did a spoiler cast for Control. You can yep. go over to any podcast service or YouTube and listen to our uh, Control spoiler cast. We went over Easter eggs. We went over how we fought about the game, and uh, yep. we talked about that weird ending, which was cool. Yep. But that's over there. Yep. Really By the way, awesome. I, found, I found that um, the files about that Easter egg you were telling me about. Oh, you did? Did yep. you Did you watch it? Um, it well, it is a file. I didn't see anything, but I like I, I read there was oh, a so, file. Yeah, like so I there's read. a file you can read, and then there is I an didn't see area the... you can go and you watch a cutscene. Okay, I didn't see the cutscene. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think have you'll... to. I have to look it up. Yeah, I think you'll like. You just look it up. It's yeah, fine. yeah. That's what I did. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yep. Any ending thoughts, Alex? We are approaching the end of the podcast for this week. Mm, I'm already yeah. gonna miss the listeners already. Already. I, already. Can, I, can, I can feel that. Mickey's licking my arm. He's licking everything today. I don't know what's up with this. He hasn't stopped. <laughs> He's still going. Um, I'm scared. I mean, you get that one so about the Apex thing if you want to read that. Yes, I do actually. Um, so there's a couple things about Apex actually this week. Uh, there is a new physical edition coming out oh, of wow. Apex Legends. There are two. There is a Bloodhound edition coming out. And mm. a Lifeline edition. The Bloodhound edition comes with exclusive skins, exclusive so uh, gonna, banners. Um, so I'm just going to mean each edition comes with uh, stuff for that character? or Yes, it's only oh, okay, that okay, character. Okay. So okay. If, you, if you look it up real quick, um, you have to type Apex and it's the first story. Okay. Apex Legends will go from a free-to-play digital-only game to a physical game in October. More importantly, this edition of the Battle Royale game comes with exclusive legendary skins. They are $20 each and due out October 18th. There will be two versions, uh, one with Lifeline and one with Bloodhound. Mm. And there are gun skins for both, uh, legendary skins for both characters, Apex coins, a thousand, and a banner plus icon for the game, too. Oh, damn, that Bloodhound one looks cool. Yeah, I actually want the Lifeline one. Yeah, and I figured you did. Yeah, the banner is super cool. It yeah. makes you look like an angel. Yeah. And there's also a very interesting thing over on Newsweek. Apex Legend leak reveals season three battle pass, fire and ice name before release. Um, if you do not want to listen, you can go ahead and uh, sign off if you don't want to get spoiled for season three's Apex. If you do, thank you for listening. Um, always hit us up on uh, Patreon.com if you want to support us, uh, help us do this crazy thing we're trying to do, help us quit our jobs. Uh, Apex Legends data mines have allegedly revealed some major information about the game's upcoming third season. If leaks are to be believed, which usually they are, Apex Legends season three has an elemental name and it also features a wide assortment of skins and other cosmetics for battle pass owners to unlock. The evidence was found intuited by a known Apex leaker, that one mining guy, which we've been over a lot in the in the show. Starting with the name, it's I believe Apex says in season three battle pass will be called Fire Nice. Well, this may be an eternal name purely meant for use by the game's developers that respawn the title to sound like appropriate follow up to the battle charge theme of season two. If it abides by Sigma Conventions, Fire Nice may have ties to future map changes or the next big character release. And also possible elemental cosmetic stylings will be featured throughout the duration of the next pass. And speaking of the next pass, this detail was believed to be a basic outline of everything in the season three might contain. We don't have the for individual comment. Here's how the data strings work out. And the data strings aren't really a thing. You basically get skins and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's cool. If you want to get full breakdowns, yeah. you can look it up and look at the battle pass. And I still want to see if uh, that Ghost Walker thing is still up because I, I like that Void skin. Walker. Void Walker. Thing. Yeah, I think it closes the 16th. Oh, okay. Yeah, I figured up, we'd we'll try it, it out. It should be the 16th. Yeah, we can definitely try it out. I love Apex. Yeah. As you and the audience, of course, knows. Yep. These have been so busy, so we haven't been able to go back. Yeah, to Gears 5. You know, when new games come out, we yeah. have Borderlands through Friday, by the way. Yeah, I know. I realize. Friday. That's why, that's why I want to finish Gears tonight. I do, too. Um, we'll have that spoiler cast again for you guys probably, what, next Tuesday, maybe? Thursday? Wednesday? Hopefully. Hopefully. Next week. Be prepared. Yeah. Spoiler cast. 
We probably won't have that game beat though, because <laughs> that game is it's probably going to be open. Well, like, Gears Five. Oh, Gears Five. Thank. Okay. Not Borderlands. Gotcha. Borderlands. We can talk about. Sports. No, yeah, yeah. Think we'll we'll have, yeah, we'll definitely next week. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll do have like an update five. show of impressions. Yeah, next like week. That. Yeah, we'll definitely have uh, the spoiler cast for five. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gears Five. Mm-hmm. Oh, my dog's barking. Okay, yeah, I guess it's worn upset. out. They're yeah. upset. That is the calling of the ending of the episode. That is yes, the, right. Of course, weekly reminder from the dogs to shut up. Uh, thank you so much for watching watching thank you so much for listening there we go thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed any of this content please go over to patreon.com slash easy achievers and help us out you give us a dollar give us five dollars check out our perks we always have exclusive stuff for our patrons and we even have listings where you can chalk with other achievers um if you're a freeloader remember five stars everywhere give us the watch times touch our playlists touch our videos touch everything like everything things like that that helps us a lot while you're doing it touch it touch it with your finger Wiggle fingers. Wiggle fingers. <laughs> All right. I want you guys to wiggle finger while we slowly go. Okay. Wiggle fingers. All right. Y'all have a good day. I, I, Remember I, I, Twitter. I want, I want everybody to just like walk up to somebody. Just like, let's say you're just walking down Walmart. Look at somebody. Put your hand in your face and be like, wiggle fingers. And then just walk away and see what happens. They probably call the police. <laughs> <laughs> what if they do it back to you? They get it. They listen to the podcast yeah, too. That'd yeah, be amazing. Yeah, be yeah, like, that, oh, you awesome. did do wiggle fingers. Wait, and they're yeah. like, whoa. And yep. then you wiggle. That'd be the best time ever. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Again, Twitter at EVM that thousand at Crazy Flips Guy at Easy Achievers to help us out there as well. Ask us your questions. You got anything burning? Why did KFC man cross the wor- world to get to the chicken on the other side? Boom, nailed it. Yep, there you go. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all have a good one. See you.